himself. Our extra troops can go to here to reinforce us in case we need a danger. Hmm. Your Excellency, I talked to the ambassador. He said that he wants to try peace. Peace? I am Mr. Dale. Oh, please clarify. Try for peace. Huh. Peace doesn't sound so bad. Maybe I'll take the offer up on the ambassador. Hmm. I'll even shake his hand. But what if he doesn't take my hand? We must go to war for that. It, it would be treason. Ah, uh, Mrs. Teasdale, thank you for inviting me here. Your Excellency? So, refuse to shake my hand again. Oh, oh, Mrs. Teasdale, that was the last straw. To war! To war, war to war. war. Bonjour and welcome back. I'm Aaron. I'm on. And I'm Mrs. Teasdale. And together we are King King Fisher Games. Games. Today we're talking to you about Risk, the continental game of... Risk. Risk. There we go. <laughs> it's very strategic. And it's though moving dudes around the world. You're going to be doing the tacking, dice rolling, you might see some blood, sweat, and tears. Hey, what are you guys looking at me for? So join us at the table to find out more. So here we have the Game of Risk, a fascinating game of strategy in which a player can conquer the world. There are various colors of uh, armies. Color coded. And that. So today we're going to set up a three player game. We we'll take this uh, bag box, card box, card box. Whoa, that was tough to say. <laughs> uh, there are 42 of them, plus this one. This is just removed. They're going to have a horse, a cannon, or an infantry on them. And this is a wild card with one of each. This just gets shuffled. Uh, placed off to the side. Owen, you want to pick a color? Uh, I'm going to play pick yellow. Pink for somebody. Like yellow. gold. And red for me. So there's also some dice. Okay. Dice can also just sit off to the side. Uh, so in a three player game, we would count out 35 armies. Armies are going to be these little triangle pieces. Very retro and kind of cool, easy to pick up. Those are the ones. And then there are star-shaped ones. And these armies are worth 10. Let me see if I can find one real quick. Once you have your 35 armies, these, those are set off to the side. Return any unused ones to the container for now. Each player would roll a die to see who's first player. Five. Five's the number to beat. And for our third player. Oh, looks like pink would be going first. Pink, then red, then yellow last. So, for this game of Risk, which is... Three looks like it says 1959, 1963, 1975. It's a bit of an older version. This one, everyone just gets to put their pieces on one territory at a time. I'll go with the tried and true method of Australia. Oh, sorry, pink. Pink's gonna go Australia. Then it would be me, Australia. Okay, on.
we are going to continue to place our 35 armies. And this is how the game was going to look like. Uh, red going for the tried and true Australia first. Pink's pretty even. Maybe going for Australia. And then yellow, very strong in North America. This game is played to global domination. There's no, there's no missions. There's no allies. There's no nothing like that. Um, on player's turn, you declare where you're attacking to, where you're and where you're attacking from. If I attack from Western Australia to Eastern Australia, uh, with this setup, I can roll the three, uh, three dice. Uh, if I were to attack from India, though, I can only roll two dice because. I can only move two armies out with one remaining there to occupy it. Um, if I were to attack from Alaska, it only has two, so then I'd only be able to roll one again because I could only move one out and still show that I occupy Alaska. Uh, when you're defending, you can roll, you'll roll one or two dice depending on how many armies are in there. So again, back to Western Australia and Eastern Australia. The defender has two armies in there, so they can roll the two dice. If there's only one unit in the defending territory, you can only roll one dice. One die. If the defending territory only has one unit, you can only roll one die. Uh, say China here has three units, so they could still roll two dice in, uh, to defend. When you do take over a territory, here, I only want to roll those. So I'll go Eastern Australia to Western Australia. Dice are rolled. You're going to compare the highest for the attacker and the highest for the defender. So this point, six and five. So one comes off. Then you compare the next highest, which is four for the attacker, and one for the defender. So they come off. You can move, uh, you have to move minimum the number of dice. Uh, minimum units as the dice that you rolled, so I couldn't move three. In this um, in this example, I would move everybody over there to then further attack New Guinea. If I were to take over New Guinea, then I would control Australia completely, owning all the territories, um, which gives you bonuses at the end uh, for owning North America, South America, Africa. Asia, Europe, and Australia. Um, so at the end of your turn, you can do a... Uh, growing up, we called it troopsy, but you're just going to be moving your units from one territory to any adjacent territory that are connected. That's in a, in a continuous line. So here I could only move them to Indonesia because Siam is occupied by yellow. If, for example, Siam was occupied by me, I could move them from New Guinea all the way up to India because that is one continuous unbroken line. Say, if this um, Alaska was controlled by pink, th these pinks could follow this dotted line, it's a bridge, and end up here. And that same same for these, they can uh, move through those bri bridges and okay. attack through those br bridges too. Um, if you take over at least one territory on your turn, you get a card, keeping it face down. Don't really have to worry about them until you have three of them. Once you have three cards, do, do, do. After taking over territories, you want to look at them and you're trying to get uh, three of a kind or one of each. So this example wouldn't work, but if I had these three horses, then I'd get uh, recruitment starting at four extra armies uh, when I hand in these cards. And that goes um, each time you hand in cards or any of the players hand in cards, you'll get territories and or uh, you'll get armies based on uh, how many sets have already been returned, as well as owning territories. If I own Eastern Australia, oh, look at that. Then I would get an additional army 
in that territory and New Guinea. This version of the game, you get to put recruits on any territory that you own when hanging them in. And that's the basic uh, rundown of the game. We'll pass the dice. Whoa, we'll pass the dice to the next player. Con uh, the game continues until one player controls the world. World domination risk. <laughs> and that's how you set up and play through Risk. Oh, and what's something you like about it? Oh, I like playing through the world domination. Yeah. What about you, Cole? I, um, I like moving dudes around the world. Nice. I like playing the odds and rolling all the dice. This month, every weekend, we are posting a new video about each Risk game that we own. That's right. So we have our game to, that we did today, which was from the 50s, 60s. Uh, then we have the uh, Parker Brothers re-edition. It's got cubes instead of the triangles. We've got uh, Lord of the Rings Risk, as well as uh, uh, the newish one from the 2010s, something like that, with the triangle. Back to the triangle shaped pieces. Uh, hope you guys come back and check those out. Uh, comment down below if you guys know what movie we, we reenacted during the intro. If you would like to support our channel, like and subscribe for more board gaming content. We like to have fun with you. Beautiful. Gigawatt Min Minowa.